you join me behind the wheel of a 2015 Toyota Auris touring sport or what normal people might call an estate or station wagon. This is the second generation of Toyota Auris and it came out in 2012, although the touring sport actually came out in 2013. Similarly named to the villain in Goldfinger, Auric Goldfinger. Morning, Mr. Simmons. Ready for a little game? Auris is named after gold, a Latin word for gold or uh, Aurum. Now this is the Mark II and it's been around for almost 10 years now and they've actually replaced it with the, the new Corolla. Now I've previously reviewed the Mark I so it'll be interesting to see what I think of it. And the first thing I've noticed getting in this car and driving it, I mean, this steering is just light. It is light as anything. I can steer this car with one finger. Not quite as light as the Peugeot 207 but it's ridiculously light and very easy to drive. The clutch just engages very nicely and it's super, super simple car to drive. To design the Touring Sports over the regular Auris hatchback, they basically just stretch the car out a bit. So you've got a lot more space in the back than you do in the regular Auris, obviously, with it being the estate version. And I think actually, I think it looks better than the, the standard Auris hatchback. I think the, the shape of the car in general just, just looks a little bit nicer. So normally when I pick up a car for review, I, I make sure to ask the owner, um, have you had any problems with the car? What sort of things have you needed fixing over the, t over the years you've had it? And whenever I get a Toyota on, I, I always know it's a bit of a formality. It's like, well, have you had any issues with the car? And, and they'll either say, no, it's been perfectly fine, or they'll go, well, it's needed uh, new tyres, new brakes, servicing, quite a bit really. <laughs> Essentially, these cars are just incredibly well built. The owner, Janice, thank you Janice, she's had this car for five years and she's put 85,000 miles on it. So she bought it at 20,000, it's now on 105. In that time, it, literally nothing has gone wrong with it. She's looked after the car and uh, true to the nature of Toyota, it's looked after her. The interior of the Auris Mark II, compared with the Mark I, it's, it's very different actually. They've, they've gone from the sort of playful fun of the of the center console that has a gap underneath it and it's gone to this much more sensible modern looking design it's all very black it looks nice enough but it's not quite as uh, exciting or interesting as the first Auris. so over the mark one Auris, toyota made quite a few changes to improve the, the rigidity of the body they lowered the center of gravity of the car increased levels of refinement and comfort and lower nvh noise vibration and harshness so this car is generally a more comfortable car. It's got incredibly light steering, but it still has that, that dependability of handling that the Mark I had. It's obviously not a sports car, but it feels absolutely fine to me to drive. If you want to get a pace on with it, you can. You obviously just don't get any feedback from the steering. It just feels like the car's being guided in the general direction of the steering wheel, but it's fine, it, it can be enjoyable. A few years back, the WEC driver, or World Endurance Championship driver, Anthony Davidson, was uh, given one of these touring sports to drive. And he looked very happy to, to be driving it. So you're in good company. I mean, he's an excellent driver. He, he was even in Formula One for a while. It's not quite um, Fernando Alonso getting a uh, special edition Ferrari 458. This particular car is the mid-level icon trim level, and that, that gives it quite a nice little touchscreen here and, and a reversing camera and heated seats as well. But it's, yeah, it's fairly well appointed in here and, and uh, the materials all feel pretty nice. The engine in this car is the 1.4 D4D diesel. Oh, listen to that diesel purr. But this on paper is not 60 in 12 seconds, but it does have that nice torque. Even though with this tiny 1.4, it still has a, a, a little bit of oomph to get you up hills and stuff. The hybrid is obviously an excellent car and, and based on the same Prius platform that the, uh, the Lexus CT is, is also based on. I've, I've driven a car with that, that hybrid system with the ECVT gearbox and everything and it's, it's fantastic. So if you want a hybrid car uh, a few years old then, then the Auris is a good one to go for. The other cool thing about this being diesel, if you're in the UK the road tax is just £20 a year. So a very affordable car to run in general based on the fact that nothing goes wrong with them. Road tax is negligible and the fuel economy is excellent. Interior practicalities, a couple of um, big cup holders that fit the fat bottom bowl. You've got the door pockets which also have a cup holder built into them as well. USB port and aux input on the dashboard. A centre console which doubles up as an armrest which you can slide forward and backwards. And you can also fit a few things in the centre console cubby. 
you've got a, a cavernous glove box, a sunglasses holder up here, as well as a little um, cubby, little tiny one for little cards and stuff by the steering wheel. You can adjust the uh, steering wheel up and down and outwards as well. It's fairly intuitive in here, but there is one funny button in the climate controls that just says fast, soft on it. I had to have a little look through the uh, manual because I was like, what's that do? Um, but it just changes the, the fan speed between normal, fast and soft. Well, I mean, they have got the fan speed here as well on the left on this twisty dial. So I think this is for the auto climate control. Delicious. Even the dials in front of you are quite different from the Mark One Aris. Gone are the sort of interesting dished 3D effect that you got and the weird orangeness of everything. And now it's uh, much more sensible and everything's blue now. This touchscreen is certainly showing its age. Um, the sat nav is not uh, anything to write home about. I'd probably just keep using my phone, to be honest. I like the reversing camera, but um, you've got like, your trip information, past trips and things, and what MPG you've been getting. And... Oh, you can also connect your phone via Bluetooth as well. And it has auto start-stop, as you might have just heard the engine start up randomly there. In 2015, Toyota facelifted the Auris, and with that came an updated interior with a smarter-looking touchscreen and some other nice touches. This car is one of the last pre-facelifts. It wouldn't be a review of an estate car without looking in the back, and I'm going to hand over to my... Uh, colleague backseat JJ because he basically hasn't had to do anything for the last couple of videos because they've been like two seat roadsters and stuff. I'm going to go for a walk and uh, contemplate what exactly it is I'm doing with my life. Back here, like the Mark 1 Auris, it's uh, surprisingly good with it set for JJ in front of me at, at six foot. I've got knee room in front of me and headroom above me so it's really good. You've got little cup holders in the side, in the door pockets. There's a 12 volt socket down here. So it's, it's not a bad place to be back here, very spacious. I'm, uh, I'm nicking one of these while he's out. Hi. The back of the Auris, you've got this tonneau cover. Then there's the easy flat fold rear seats. Oh, look at that. Just pull the handle, down they go. That's actually pretty good. I don't have to go in there and push them. What a world. And then of course you've got like underfloor, like a little thin bit under here. And, oh, loads of storage under there. And then little cubby hole thingies on the sides as well. Here's something that people reviewers like to pick on and it is kind of funny and it's the fact that it's got a little LCD clock that uh, looks like it's from 1985. I mean at least it's separate from everything else so you can just easily change the time on it and you know you don't have to mess around on the screen. If you live in the UK and uh, you like your produce to be homegrown and local the Auris is a good car to buy because it was built uh, in Derby right in the centre of England so you can feel all happy and smug that you've helped the British economy. And if you live somewhere else, then uh, please buy an Auris and support the UK, we need it. <laughs> the Auris is a uh, very safe car, um, five-star Euro NCAP rating, and uh, it's got seven airbags as standard, so certainly a good one to uh, keep your family safe in. The Mark I Auris had uh, its fuel gauge in like blocks of fuel, and that, that's something that always annoys me because you can't see the exact amount of fuel you've got left. But in this car, it's like, a massive analog fuel gauge is perfect. Interesting that they they went back to an analog system after having a digital one in the uh, in the first hours. I think overall it does it does feel like a, a just a very it just feels like an improved version of the first hours. It's it's everything that a car did but just slightly better. So fair play to Toyota for basically just taking what they had and, and improving it. it. It's the sort of car that you, that you could just sit in for hours and. And, you know, it's quite relaxing to drive, easy to drive. You're not going to get tired out by it. It's just a comfortable car that you could uh, cover lots of miles in. If you've got a car that you'd like to see on the channel, please get in touch. The information will be in the description below. If you want to see the review of the original Mark 1 Auris, uh, click up here. And if you want to see the review of the Lexus CT200H, which has the same hybrid system as a lot of the Aurises, click down here. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.